Hey guys, I want to talk about some uh, vapor lock issues for fuel injection. Um, it's pretty rare, um, but it actually does happen, and I'll show you the reason why. Uh, so right there is my multi-port fuel injection fuel rail, and I do actually have a, I don't know if you can see that, but I do have a rail mount uh, fuel injection pump, but I think the problem is, I mean, I pretty much I think I know what the problem is. It's that there's no uh, anti-drain back valve or check valve. So what happens is the fuel the fuel rail when I turn the car off uh, loses pressure, and when it's on a hot day, it basically the fuel will boil on this rail and push the fuel back through the pump. So when I turn the car back on, it's really really lean until the it cools off and gets gets pressure again but uh, yeah that happened to me the other day i was uh in walmart parking lot and it was a hot day and when i first started the car back up it had been sitting for like like 30 20 30 45 minutes and it was really hard starting you know and uh i looked at my fuel pressure gauge on, on my holly uh on my holly dash here i'll show you that and i got uh it was uh, running very, very, the fuel pressure was very low. So normally I ran at about 35 PSI and it was about 24 PSI. So I knew there was something wrong with my fuel pump, but as soon as I started driving the car and the rails cooled down and I built up pressure, you know, it, I was around fine after that. So the only thing I could conclude was that it was boiling because there's no check valve to keep the rails under pressure when the car is off. Um, it would uh, boil back and it would allow the, uh, build up a lot of vapor in the rails. So, um, so I, I actually, I'm gonna do a couple tests here, but I do actually have a fuel gauge that, I do actually have a mechanical gauge that actually goes to my computer back there. This little thing right there, connects to my uh, fuel regulator. That's actually, uh, but that's not gonna help me because if I have the power on, the fuel pump will be running and it's gonna do a, a test. So what I'm gonna do is, put this fuel gauge in my rail down here if I can fit my hand in there. That way when I turn the car off, I'll know I can see the fuel pressure drop. You know, I'll, I'll know if the fuel pressure, the fuel, fuel rail is staying under pressure when the car is off. And that's actually what I'm shooting for, but I do have a, I'll come back, I do have a check valve that I've already bought and I'll show you that real quick. All right, my desk is a mess. I'm always working on projects. I always have more projects than I can handle. <laughs> All right, so I bought this over at Amazon. I'll put links to all this stuff. Actually, I bought all this stuff on Amazon. So this is a JEGS, uh, it's a one-way check valve, 6 a.m., because that's what I run. Gasoline, meth, biodiesel. But uh, I'll show you what this thing does. I'll put my camera in, I'll open it up real quick. All right, guys, here it is. Took it apart so you can see the internals of this thing. And it's basically like a flapper. It's like a, it goes this way, fuel goes, fuel goes this way. So what happens is when the fuel pump, I guess this is five PSI. Once it gets to five PSI, it will open this up, but then it closes, then the fuel pressure can't get back through. Is there an O-ring on there? Okay, no O-ring, but the fuel pressure, it, it's hopefully gonna hold that, you know, at least 30 PSI or, or, or close to 40 PSI in there and it won't get back there. So that's the idea of the check valve. Because I want to keep that fuel pressure under the fuel rail under pressure so the gas can't boil because gas will not boil if it's under pressure. At least if it's under I mean it's I mean I think 30 to 40, 40 psi should prevent that from boiling in there. So um, yeah it happened to me a couple times on hot days so I'm gonna first hook up that fuel gauge pressure gauge then I'll show you the drop. So what I'll do is I'll turn the fuel the fuel car on. You know, it will be like 35 to 36 psi. And then I'll turn it off and I'll see if it maintains pressure. If it doesn't maintain pressure, then I'm going to put this check valve valve in. If it if it does, then I'll go what the hell's going on and I'll have to figure out something else. So all right. 
All right, guys, so I couldn't get my mechanical gauge to work right. I tried two different gauges, but... So, I actually have my uh, car connected to the battery right now. I'm going to let it run. You'll hear the fuel pump come on. And I'm going to just keep the car on. So right now it's at 34 PSI. Put my radio down here, and I'm going to keep on coming back and look at it and see if that drops. So, this, this usually isn't actually a problem with... Uh, Factory cars, because factory cars actually have a check valve, or actually they're called they're called multiple different names: check valve, check ball, anti drain back. Um, in electronics, it's called a diode. You know, only allows current one way. But uh, all right, I'm gonna come back and see if that pressure drops. In a couple minutes, right there, 34 psi. So we'll see. Hey guys, back here. So been waiting about 15 to 20 minutes still 33 psi so I think this is not a good accurate test what I need to do is get this engine really really hot and I have the engine bay closed and it's because I actually when I took the uh, when it was really really hot I took out the uh, you know the fuel pressure gauge tap and just a bunch of hot air was coming out of it so I know the gas is definitely boiling in the line and I got to do that I got to keep it under pressure so um, all right guys Hey guys, got these uh, 6 a.m. couplers, so today I'm going to put this uh, the one-way valve on, check valve, and see if that makes any difference. Uh, I'm starting to think maybe I have a leaking in fuel, fuel injector too, maybe, just because sometimes it feels like I'm kind of hydro-locking. I'm not sure 100%, but it seems like that could be something going on, you know. Um, when I start the car up, sometimes I get like a major whiff of like a uh, fuel, you know. So, um, all right. Well, I mean, at least I need to, I, I need to make sure this thing is actually there's no drain back. Yeah. You know, so regardless if it's leaking or not, I need to have this anti-drain back in there to keep it pressurized, so it's guaranteed. You know, it's not going to go backwards. All right. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this put on and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Hey, what's up, guys? Got my helper here with me. Little kid right here. Um, so one thing I noticed that was definitely odd is I'm taking, I'm separating this fuel line. Hey, you gotta be quiet. Um, and no fuel pressure's coming out of there. So normally this would be squirting. I mean, if this was like like right after I turned the car off, it'd be squirting fuel pressure. But that means there's no like no this this front line going up is under no pressure at all. So um, that's not a good thing for fuel injection. Yeah, you, know, you want to keep that line under pressure. So all right, guys. Get this thing on, I'll come back. All right guys, hopefully you can see this. So this is my pre-filter. Comes into my fuel pump. Then this is the anti-drain back valve. And then it goes into my after filter. And then goes up in the engine. Let's get a little close to the exhaust pipe, but it's fine. Um, and hopefully this will maintain pressure all the way forward, leaving fuel in the line here. But if I have a leaking fuel injector, you know, like when the car's off, like it doesn't see all the way. Sorry. Then I'll be leaking gas on my intake manifold, and that also causes hard starting. But uh, sometimes I feel like there's almost like a vapor lock—not really vapor lock, but uh, more like a hydro lock situation sometimes. So don't know what's up with that. But at least this will take this part of the equation out of it. So, all right. All right, guys, do a quick fuel. I can hear the fuel pump come on. Just want to make sure I'm getting pressure up front. Yep. Sorry, I turned my volume down there. And check for leaks. Let's see, obvious leaks. I don't really like how long that whole system is, but what I can really do, you know, I need to have two filters, so. And those are actually probably bigger, and I, I could've got probably smaller filters on that one. But uh, the bigger the filters, the better, you know, the longer it takes to clog up. Um, yeah, I think those are Aeromoto filters. But yeah, this doesn't actually usually, this, this is only, uh, this is because it's aftermarket fuel injection, you know. <clears throat> if I had an intake pump, it looks like they have an anti-drain back valve, but all modern cars have anti-drain back valves to keep the fuel pressure pressurized in the fuel rail. So, awesome. So, if I have any more problems, then I'll come back with another video. <clears throat> Le leaking fuel injector, and that's what I'm looking at, but I just want to at least know down here I'm keeping the fuel pressure there's no way for it to get back into the tank because 
you saw that when I when I uncoupled the fuel line. I mean, normally there should be pressure. Like if I were to just turn the car off, it would have been shooting out gas because it still would have been pressurized. But like I need to be able to maintain that pressure overnight. So when I go back in and turn the car in the morning, I have immediate fuel pressure. It's already the fuel pressure uh, rail is already pressurized. You know, ready to start pulsing gas in the engine. So. If it's not that, then it's going to be a leaking fuel injector, but we'll see what happens. All right, cool, guys. Thanks.